Welcome to my views and news talk starting between Sudanese army and rapid support forces today in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, who is uh, attending these talks on behalf of rapid support forces and Sudanese army details for you. Secondly, a UN official has confirmed the entry of uh, fighters from West Africa into Sudan. The fighters are entering uh, Sudanese territories to support rapid support forces. What is the motive behind the entry of these fighters behind their joining uh, rapid support forces? Detail for you. And thirdly, viewers, uh, I have details for you on a map about a supply route which is being used by rapid support forces. Uh, to send supplies to their forces in Khartoum. RSF members are in Khartoum Central, uh, in control of Khartoum International Airport, in control of Sunni's Army Headquarters. They are in Umadirman too, in control of uh, radio and uh, television station, they are in Bahri too. How are supplies arriving here? Which route is being taken by rapid support force members? Supplies are coming mainly from Western Sudan. Uh, fighters are entering uh, Western Sudan. So how are they reaching the central uh, Khartoum? We have details on a map for you. Firstly, viewers, Saudi Arabia and uh, the United States of America, USA, have managed to convince the Sudanese army and rapid support forces to talk. The talks will be held in Jeddah, a talk starting today and the two delegations uh, have arrived in Jeddah today reportedly. From Sudni side, three army officers and one ambassador uh, are part of this uh, delegation. Major General Fakiri Major General Mahju, uh, Mahjoub and Ambassador Umar are part of Sudanese Army's delegation. From Rapid Support for side, we have Brigadier General Umar Hamdan. Is he Hamdan Dagalo's brother? We don't know, but another brother of Hamdan Dagalo is part of the team. His name is Major Kuni Hamdan Dagalo. Kuni Hamdan Dagalo is uh, Hamdan Dagalo's brother and Faisal Al Noor. And Kuni is running two companies, two front companies uh, of rapid support forces GSK, which is a security and technology company, not the multinational pharmaceutical company. Uh, that GSK is another company. This GSK is a security and technology company. Secondly, Taradiv, which is registered in Dubai, UAE, which is a trading company. The two companies are basically front companies uh, for RSF's uh, uh, other dealings. RSF is in charge of uh, gold mines, uh, aluminium reserves and other uh, metals and mineral reserves in uh, Western Sudan and these companies and Al Junaid, which is another company uh, of uh, rapid support forces, these companies uh, handle all transactions of rapid support forces. So Al Kuni is there uh, in Jeddah today. Talks starting in coming hours. We'll try to update you. Uh, but uh, U.S. government and Saudi Arabian government, they say these are pre-negotiation talks. Very interesting term, pre-negotiation talks. It means uh, these are not talks, uh, full-fledged talks. They'll only focus on ceasefire, on silencing of gun for a few uh, weeks or implementation of ceasefires. Ceasefires being announced but not being fully implemented. And so Arabia and US have emerged as key players in this uh, conflict. We, they have managed to convince the parties uh, to talk. IGAD, Africa Union, uh, they were uh, trying a separate initiative. IGAD invited representatives from uh, 
uh, RSF and uh, Sudanese army to come to Juba to talk, but uh, uh, it seems that uh, Saudi Arabia and US they have upper hand when it comes to uh, the influence of mediators and foreign powers in uh, Sudan. Let's see what happens. Uh, we'll try to bring some videos about this. Uh, uh, first uh, engagement between RSF and Sudanese army. Secondly, we heard Walker Perthes, which is a UN uh, official, head of UN uh, Integrated Transition Assistance Mission in Sudan, has confirmed that uh, foreign fighters are entering Sudanese territories. These foreign fighters are entering uh, Western Sudan. And they are mostly from Chad, from Mali, and from Niger. From West African countries, these foreign fighters are entering Sudan and they are supporting Rapid Support Force members. Question is, why are they supporting Rapid Support Force members? Because uh, RSF uh, has uh, money to give. So they are coming for wealth. RSF in control of, as I said earlier, uh, mineral metal reserves in Western Sudan. So RSF is in a position uh, to pay these mercenaries. And wherever they uh, know they can uh, get lots of money, they are ready to fight. So it's not ideological support that they are going to give logical support and armed support as well. Uh, mainly they are here for money. And rapid support force is in control of mines. It can uh, finance them. Uh, thirdly, viewers, uh, an interesting revelation about a supply route which is being adopted, which has been taken by rapid support force members to supply its uh, tops, its fighters uh, in a central Khartoum. Have a look at this map. Now, let me be clear, RSF could be using several supply routes or you can say more than one supply routes to provide weapons, to send reinforcements to its forces which are mainly in Khartoum. And supplies, reinforcements are coming mainly Western Sudan from here, from Darfur. And we know that uh, foreign mercenaries are entering Sudan to, uh, through Central African Republic. Maybe through Chad as well, but uh, through Central African Republic, they are entering Sudan. It has been confirmed from different countries they are entering there. So if, if they enter uh, Sudan from Central African Republic or from Chad, which route will they take? Uh, to reach Khartoum because rapid support force members are here. They are in a Khartoum center. They are here. They are in Umedarman as well, in, in Bahri too. How will the supplies reach? How are the supplies reaching these RSF fighters from uh, Western Sudan? Uh, this road is crucial. We discussed in yesterday's video uh, that all supplies from Western Sudan, they mostly uh, move along this road. They, they pass through uh, Kardofan al ubaid where rapid support force members carried out an attack on uh, an infantry uh, headquarter of the Sudanese army around two days ago. Most of them move along this road from Darfur. But how do they reach Khartoum? Uh, what we have learned uh, through uh, some uh, sources and through the people who are monitoring these developments, they claim that this road is being used. Uh, this one, Salha to Umedraman road. Of course, you have to reach this road from Western Sudan, I think uh, they are mainly moving along this road and then uh, this is uh, North Kardofan towards uh, Kosti and uh, from here they managed to reach Salha. Let me show you Salha. 
on this map. Now, an interesting uh, route from here onwards. From Salha, RSF members enter Umedraman, main Umedraman. And uh, then uh, here they enter Bahri from Umedraman. This bridge, which you can see, uh, called Shambat Bridge. This bridge is being used. Uh, it is under the control of rapid support force members. So, Umedraman, they enter Bahri. And then they move uh, through Bahri and uh, they reach uh, Giraffe here. From Giraffe, they move along this road and then they reach uh, East Nile. And they cross East Nile uh, towards Khartoum through this bridge called Manshia Bridge. From East Nile uh, through Manshia Bridge and they move towards the Khartoum, uh, Khartoum International Airport. So it's a very interesting route which is being taken by uh, rapid support force members to send supplies to their uh, forces which are somewhere here. It means that they are in Khartoum, they are in Khartoum Central, they are in Umm Darma, they are in Bahri, they are uh, uh, to the east as well, uh, East Nile, uh, this area under their control. And at the same time, they are managing uh, to keep their supplies flowing along this road from uh, Darfur, from Sudan, Chad, uh, Sudan, uh, Central African Republic border. Again, not the only route. There could be other routes as well being used by rapid support force members to send supplies to their forces in Khartoum Center. 